just use a, a little phrase for the ego, the wild child. Uh, we'll call it the wild child this morning. Why? Because the ego doesn't have a parent. Uh, we all know in this world, you know, that the children can have sometimes a little bit of a wild streak in there. And then the parents are supposed to be very patient and loving, disciplining at times, and so on and so forth. But we could say more guiding. You know, when a child wants to just go off and, and do anything it wants, uh, then the parent is there to offer guidance and wisdom. Uh, and you could say one thing about the ego is it, well, it doesn't have a parent. It's not only a wild child, it's a bastard wild child. <laughs> and uh, the thing about it is it, it doesn't have a parent. It doesn't have a source. It wasn't created. So it doesn't know what creation is. It has nothing creative about it. You know, when people talk about with music and art and all these different things being creative, that's not really creative in the truest abstract sense. Creation is a state of mind. So, so we've got this puff of nothing, which is called the bastard wild child, and that thing, uh, it's, it's very erratic. Um, it's Let's say impulsive. It's very impulsive. If you're wild and you're erratic, you're impulsive as well. And and in that sense, it has it has no steadiness to it. It has no stability to it. So why do we need commitment? Let's talk about what Suzanne said. If if we could just come at the thing, well. If I just think of it in terms of committing in the present moment, then, ah, oh, that feels much better. I can make the point. There's the wedding bell. I love you now. <laughs> That's the end of the vow. <laughs> you may now kiss the bride. But the thing about it is, is everyone who comes to this world or believes they're here in this world believes in the ego. And the ego is the denial of the present moment. The denial of the present moment, the denial of eternity. So even when we say, okay, I just want to make a commitment to the present moment, ultimately that's really deep down what you are committing to, because that's your escape back to eternity, is the present moment. But, you know, to say the words commitment is different from actually committing. And we all know that. We've We've, sometimes we say, okay, I'm committed. Sometimes. <laughs> I'm committed. Partially. You know, uh, I'm committed. You know, it's, you know, the, the ego, of course, is the wild child. And in one sense, it's like the mind that is being asked to make a commitment is identified with the ego. So, of course, there's going to be resistance to the commitment because commitment is going to be a device that the Holy Spirit uses to bring the, back, the mind back into stability, into stillness. So, ego, wild child, impulsive, doesn't even know what commitment is. Impulsiveness doesn't know what commitment is. So there's zero awareness of commitment. Now the Holy Spirit, into a deceived mind, has to introduce the concept, the idea of commitment, as a device. Just like we've talked about leader, follower, teacher, student, you know, those are all these devices. Introduces commitment as a device and says, okay, I'm going to work with you on this one. Why is it important to have this device of commitment? Because the atonement, which is the correction, which is the goal of the curriculum, is a total commitment. You see the difference between down the ego, though it's no awareness of what commitment is, and the atonement, which is the escape from this realm, is the total commitment. So this is why the Holy Spirit has to introduce the commitments. 
And it's really, they're just mind training commitments. When you commit to a marriage, for example, I mean, some of the wedding vows that go on in marriages, you know, till death do you part. Till death. It's kind of a morbid commitment, really. Anything that involves death, you better question that one before you say yes to the minister. Till death do you part. You're really going for something much beyond the death. You're actually going for a state of, of harmony. Uh, till harmony dissolves the two of us and we merge in bliss and union. <laughs> I like that one a little better. Till death do you part. So, you can see the commitment is, is just a stepping stone idea that is designed to bring the mind toward total commitment, which is the goal. To introduce commitment and bring it there. That's why when we talk about monogamy, or we talk about commitment to a diet, or commitment to an exercise regimen, or commitment to a martial arts program, yoga, uh, even making a commitment, some of you maybe thought, mm, I don't know if I'm going to the noose or not, but maybe you felt, I need to make a commitment to go. I don't know how I'm going to pay for it, but I need to make a commitment to go, or I don't know how it's going to fit into my schedule, but I feel like a strong commitment to go to it. So we are given many opportunities to make these commitments as we go along, and, and they can be very, very guided by the Holy Spirit. And they're, they're all temporary. Let's make sure we understand that. These are temporary devices. They're not like signing in blood, you know, signing your soul away in blood. Sometimes the ego will believe, try to convince you that you're doing that, but of course it's terrified of the commitment. So that's why that comes in. And as long as you start to see these are just temporary devices that are used and that the deeper you go with this commitment, you do come more to, to the present moment, to the actual present moment, which is the atonement. And so it is in alignment with that. That's where you get that easy feeling, like, that's really part of the goal. That's, that's what commitments are designed to do, to take you there. As far as breaking commitments, you know, there's a big stigma about keeping them and breaking them. It's really not so much about keeping them or breaking them, but it's like, again, what is the guidance? Which advisor in your mind are you listening to? You know, there shouldn't be a stigma with breaking, like a negative thing and a positive thing with keeping, in the sense that there are times where the Holy Spirit wants you to keep a commitment, and then there are times when the Holy Spirit will say, now let that go, I've got another assignment for you. Don't hold on to that one. Here's your next one. Uh, so it's not so much a stigma around keeping or breaking. It's more just, okay, what is guided? What is guided? That's always the same. What serves the whole is always a question underneath. That's, this can be involved with personal or interpersonal relationships, with jobs, with uh, leases, uh, Leases for houses or apartments, condos, and so forth. Flats. You know, it can it can involve uh, a commitment to watch your neighbor's dogs and cats. You know, it can, you know, there are all kinds of temporary commitments that are all just used for mind training, for helping to flush the ego up out of its hiding place and bring it up into awareness, and then eventually just make that final commitment where you you make the final call for God in an unequivocal way. In other words, you make a yes to God and not a but. Yes, but. Yes, although, it's an unequivocal yes. That would be the atonement in mind. Not, it's not a form thing. So that's just a little mini talk on commitment.